Uh, welcome to lesson 29 of industrial automation and control. Today, we will discuss, start discussing pneumatic control systems and we will discuss the pneumatic principles, the main pneumatic system components and some simple applications. So, coming on to the instructional objectives, <coughs> after learning the lesson, the students should be able to describe the principles of operation of pneumatic systems and understand its advantages. Be familiar with basic pneumatic components and what roles they play in the overall system. Describe the main technical features of pneumatic compressors and its accessories of course and be familiar with direction control valves. So, that will give us the first uh, a basic idea of a pneumatic control system. So, what is pneumatics? As I often do, I checked up the Oxford reference dictionary and pneumatics means operated by air or gas under pressure. So, since we have already had some lectures on lessons on <coughs> hydraulic controls, in hydraulics con controls, there both hydraulics and pneumatics are fluidic control systems where a fluid under pressure is used to do work. In hydraulics, this fluid is oil and in pneumatics, it is air, it is compressed air. So, there are certain advantages and disadvantages as well of using compressed air. So, the main benefit from pneumatic systems is that air is free to collect and exhaust. So, you know it is simply collected, you do not need to buy it and therefore, it is cheap and it can be exhausted into the atmosphere. So, you do not. So, you do not need return tubing. So, you see that for hydraulics, you need one uh, pipe or tube for carrying the fluid to the place of work, namely the load and you need another pipe or tube to bring it back. Now, this is not necessary for pneumatics since you are using, when you are using air which is mostly the case, because you can directly exhaust it to the atmosphere right at that, at that place of work and therefore, you save half the tubing cost. So, that is quite a lot. There is another reason why pneumatics is, is generally turns out to be cheaper than you know electric actuation or hydraulic actuation. One of the reasons is that in pneumatics, the cost of the, comp the air handling equipment that is the compressor, basically the compressor uh, actually is shared among the application. So, so, suppose in a factory, if you go to a let us say a factory like let us say telco, if you go to the assembly plant of telco. Uh, then you will find that there are numerous places where pieces of you know let us say pieces of the engine are getting getting uh, assembled. So, in each one of these places there you will find that there are various kinds of tools that to be used you know. So, uh, like you know wrenches, screwdrivers. Now, to ensure a uniform degree of uh, performance with these tools and also not to exhaust the exhaust the operator, people use pneumatic tools. So, you will find that every operator station actually has some uh, compressed air supply and that compressed air supply. So, you, you so you are using compressed air to, to do work at numerous places, but you possibly need only one big compressor and then run a line of compressed air through at different places. So, this, so the cost of the compressor actually gets divided and this leads to you know cheaper uh, cheaper uh, a system compared to let us say electric where you would have needed to maybe maybe put a motor at each of these places right. So, therefore, in such cases where the there are numerous uh, applications uh, spread over some area generally called the cost of pneumatic systems become cheaper. Now, there are there is another important advantage of pneumatic systems is that while electric systems are you know prone to fire because of electric sparks 
and hydraulic oil is 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 inflammable being from you know uh, petroleum derivatives pneumatic systems are intrinsically safe and therefore often preferred in you know places like you know explosive environments so let's say a let's say a natural gas plant would prefer would have a lot of application for pneumatic control systems to uh, be free from the hazard of explosion similarly maintenance is easier because of the fact that uh, i mean in hydraulic systems if there is a leak in oil which is a major maintenance uh, headache uh, then first of all you are going to lose oil so that is expensive secondly it is going to you know create general environmental problem thirdly it is it is also uh, inflammable but in in pneumatics if you if, if there are you know small leaks here and there which are which are kind of inevitable uh, then apart from the fact that a leak all is is always going to cause a loss of pressure and therefore some uh, loss of energy uh, apart from that the uh, consequences of that leak are minimal and therefore maintenance need not be so stringent so maintenance is generally a little easier <laughs> on the other hand there are disadvantages of pneumatic systems as well for example firstly these systems are slower in performance compared to hydraulics their power handling ratings are also generally slower and <coughs> compared to I mean in terms of sophisticated controls they, pro, they are inferior to electric controls. So having said that let us so because of these there are quite a few uses of uh, compressed air in the industry and some of them are you know pneumatic control valves. So basically uh, basically pneumatically actuated control valves that is what I meant so you know have big valves. Uh, flow control valves which are operated pneumatically using air then there are air cylinders for actuation then uh, sometimes you need starting air for diesel and gas turbine engines diesel generators and gas turbine engines for that also you need compressed air you need tools so various types of tools for screw driving for drilling for paint spray <coughs> and for clamping. So, for such operations people often use compressed air tools. So, there are lots of in, uh, applications of pneumatics in, in the industry. So, typical pneumatic control systems block diagram wise would look like this. So, you have a, you have a source, you have a source of air or gas which is at high pressure this source uh, is generally coming from the compressor and then you have a regulator and this is actually a pressure regulator this is a pressure regulator after that you need you actually get the gas at the pressure that the your the your uh, equipment will require similarly you can also have feedbacks you can have pneumatic signal feedbacks using you know things like i2p converters current to uh, pressure converters so you can have pneumatic feedbacks signals from you know various sensors and then you can have a pneumatic control system so this control system will will consist of you know various uh, maybe direction control valves and various pneumatic logic valves and or we will we will see them in the next lesson and finally this from the pneumatic control system and 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 using this regulated gas supply the actuation signal is given in this case the the application that we have uh, shown is is a is a is a valve actuator where the this valve is actually moved using pressure on this diaphragm so this is a diaphragm this is a diaphragm so using this pressurized gas you actually apply pressure in this cavity. So, what will happen is that this diaphragm will under pressure it will come down and it will close the valve here. So, <coughs> this typically is a is a kind of schematic that is used for pneumatic controls and various kinds of technologies are used. So, we are going to have a look at that. Uh,
So, let us look at the basic elements, the basic equipment in a pneumatic system. So, we start with we start with the compressor. So, this is the compressor A. Then after the compressor you have a you sometimes have a check valve B. Then you have an accumulator or reservoir of compressed air. This is very much necessary in uh, pneumatic systems to improve response speed as we will uh, discuss. After that you have you have you can have a you can have various kinds of equipment for example, in this case we have only shown a direction control valve which is uh, trying to drive a, a an air cylinder. So, but this is a this is a very typical and simple system, but in general you can have various other pieces of equipment like you can have uh, you can have uh, pressure regulators, you can have <coughs> flow control valves, various kinds of valves apart from this simple direction control valve. So, you have your actual you know control system elements here, this up to this is generally the the gas compressed air system. This is the pneumatic control system, pneumatic control elements and then finally, the actuator, finally the actuator. So, these are the three types of equipment which are typically used in pneumatic controls. So, A compressor, B check valve, C accumulator, D direction control valve and finally, E is the actuating cylinder or, or actuator. Now, in system components, compressor is the pressure source, sometimes you can have you can have a linear air cylinder or sometimes you can also have a pneumatic motor. Uh, reservoir or accumulator, <coughs> reservoir accumulator is very much necessary because of the fact that pneumatic system response tends to suffer because suppose you want to uh, move a cylinder then you have to create the pressure create pressure on it. Now, creating pressure actually uh, takes some time because the air will have to flow into the cylinder chamber and then get compressed enough. So, and then then the then the pressure in the inside the cylinder will build up and the cylinder will move. So, what happens is that if you want to move the cylinder quickly after you know let us say giving a control signal in terms of opening a direction control valve, then you want that quickly a lot of air can be supplied to the uh, quickly a lot of air can be supplied to the cylinder chamber. So, that it is quickly the pressure builds up and the cylinder starts to move. Now, supplying this uh, a lot of pressurized air quickly is is a basic problem because uh, uh, compressors are devices which can which can create a steady source of compressed air but but a very you know instant supply of large volume of air cannot be supplied from the from the uh, compressor itself so in that situation the uh, accumulator comes into play and in such situation the large volume of air can directly come from the accumulator and then the accumulator can get slowly filled up by the compressor again so, this improves system response a lot. Therefore, in pneumatic control systems, accumulators are uh, very much necessary more than in hydraulic controls. Then uh, we have the direction control valves and actuator as we have already said and we naturally need correcting tubing and accessories like filters. There are a just like in hydraulics, there are various types of control devices which are also used here. So, you have pressure control devices like pressure regulators, you have <coughs> check valves which control flow that is allows flow in a certain direction and does not allow flow in the other direction. Then there are flow control valves, flow control valves in this case they are not, uh, they are you mainly used to, to, to control the speed of motion. So, so sometimes you know you uh, need that. You, I mean for example, in the case of hydraulics we have seen that when you are driving the load typically you need slow motion and when you are returning without load you need you can have fast motion to save time. So, in such a case in such cases flow control valves can are used much uh, uh, very similarly as to what you use in uh, hydraulics. 
then there are you know various kinds of if you, if you have feedback control then you can have various kinds of uh, feedback elements like pressure switches you can have push buttons for for operator command and of course you have various kinds of you know <coughs> electrical interface devices like <coughs> uh, uh, like you have uh, i2p converters so to for for interfacing between electrical systems and hydraulic systems symbols are very similar to the ones we used in hydraulics so compressor is like this only note that the triangle is hollow in the case of hydraulics the, the, the triangle was solid because it was oil then you have reservoir you have filter <coughs> motor hydraulic motor the same as um, electric motor or uh, rather this is pneumatic motor uh, then direction control valve pressure switch and pressure gauge you know, pressure gauges are used at various points in pneumatic to uh, either to feed back pressure uh, pressure values or to read them and of course the cylinders so these symbols are fairly uh, common and very similar to hydraulics then we look at compressors compressors are <coughs> the machines which are designed to compress gases from an inlet pressure which is generally atmospheric so it takes air from the atmosphere uh, filters it and then compresses it to a high pressure and there are this 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 mechanism can be of generally of two types one is positive dis displacement where each time a certain given volume of air is uh, converted from the atmospheric pressure to uh, high pressure. So, every uh, cycle of movement of the compressor whether it is whether it's rotational or translational uh, converts a certain amount of gas uh, from low pressure to high pressure. Then when you uh, and, the, and, the, uh, and the other kind is, is non positive displacement which is basically you know uh, centrifugal type basically fans uh, essentially types of fans and blowers uh, which are typically used when you need large volumes of air but not at such high pressure so typically for high pressures positive displacement uh, type compressors are used if you if you want to convert to a very high pressure something like you know 600 700 800 1000 psi then you some often need to do it in multiple stages so you so a compressor may can, can have various stages single or multiple and it, it 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 needs to be driven right so because it compresses the air so therefore it needs to be driven by a prime mover and that there are various types of prime movers possible it can be a, the, the prime mover can be an electric motor or it can be an it can be an ic engine <coughs> or it can be even sometimes it can be a you know something like a turbine with which this uh, which with which the, the, the compressor will be uh, coupled so in places where you have you know such turbines then you can actually use use that energy for running the compressor so positive displacement could have involved linear motion or could involve circular motion so you can have either reciprocating piston type or you can have rotating vane types or rotary impeller so either you have rot rotational uh, designs or you have translational designs but in each case one cycle of rotation or one cycle of uh, to and fro motion will take a certain given volume of air and push it take it to the low pressure inlet port and push it into the outlet port so <coughs> in the reciprocating <coughs> piston type you have a piston you have a cylinder and you have some valves right and there are two strokes so one stroke is called suction and the and the other stroke is called compression so in the suction stroke you are taking in air from the low pressure side which is typically atmospheric and in the compression stroke that volume of air you are pushing onto a high pressure port and this sucking and compressing is actually guided by the set of valves as we will see this can also be single or multiple stages so here is a diagram so typically you know see this is the low pressure 
inlet port and this is the high pressure output outlet port. So, and these are the two valves, you know, which actually control the motion. And this is coupled to the prime mover. So, maybe it's a it's a it's a cam operated mechanism. So, in the <coughs> in the suction stroke, this cylinder moves this way as shown here. And then this valve is going to open because the pressure here is going to fall. So, this valve will open and air will flow in from the inlet. On the other hand, this is not exactly, uh, I mean, this is only schematically shown. So, so, since this is suction, so therefore, this will seal this outlet. So, no air will be sucked from the outlet, right. Now, after this has come to the lowest position, a certain given volume of air is going to be residing inside and that is at the uh, at the low low inlet pressure after that this alternating motion this piece cylinder will start going up the moment it starts going up it creates a high pressure here it actually compresses the air here so what happens is that this valve is now pressed up so it will be so it will be closed while this valve will also go up and then that will open the that will actually open the uh, so, the air will flow out, so the air will flow out during that time through this part and this is, so this is what is happening. So, every stroke it is bring, it is sucking a given volume of air from the low pressure atmospheric side and it is pushing the air back into the high pressure outlet. So, this is a reciprocating type <coughs> compressor mechanism for rotary uh, compressors they are they are they are either you know vein type where as we have seen in, in the case of hydraulics also we have seen vein type uh, pumps where the rotational motion of the of the vein inside inside a cavity will just uh, when the veins move air is sucked in from the inlet and that air is transferred back to the outlet at high pressure. So, here also you can have singular multiple stages. The other option which is which is non positive displacement are fans, they are generally used where high flow volume capacities are needed, but at low pressure. So, in such cases fans are used and they can be centrifugal or they can be axial. Uh, I am sorry, let me see what is here. So, obviously compressors apart from that mechanism requires other accessories like for example, lubrication. Lubrication is very important in uh, in pneumatic systems, uh, firstly because they are not self lubricating just like hydraulics. So, you have to have special lubrication uh, mechanisms here and second also because th there is the, the tendency of air to leak is actually much more than the tendency of oil because of because air has very low viscosity and oil has high viscosity. So, oil does not uh, tend to uh, leak out as easily as air does. So, <coughs> so, therefore, all seals everything are much tighter to prevent air from leaking and, th and that creates a lot of friction. So, lubrication is more necessary. Similarly, cooling because the, the compressor is actually doing a lot of work. So, a lot of heat is produced which needs to be cooled and you need unloading systems you know compressors are uh, energy guzzlers. So, whenever you do not need uh, when you have adequate created adequate compressed air supply then there has to be there has to be mechanisms by which these compressors are actually unloaded. <coughs> and finally, there has to be control mechanisms for uh, shutdown as well as for duty cycle control. Duty cycle control means that uh, especially stroke length control and uh, ha, ha, for, for, for how much time you are going to that is how quickly you are going to operate the piston. So, all these control devices are uh, will create will, will actually operate the compressor at uh, in, in such a manner 
that the current requirement of compressed air will be met at the I mean with the best possible energy efficiency. So, so the compressor is not run generally not run when uh, the compressed air supply is not so much required. So, compressors so if, for example, this is a this is a typical compressor where uh, you know this is we can we can see from the picture that this is a this is a uh, IC engine driven uh, compressor and this is the compressed air supply. So, that so that is the accumulator and it looks like it is portable it is just a picture which is you know downloaded from the net. <coughs> Compressors are available at various, you know, sizes or or, or or capacities, and so so 150 psi up to 150 psi would be low pressure. Low pressure, 150 to 1000 is medium, and greater than 1000 psi will be high pressure. The capacity of the compressor, so so there is a pressure rating, which is decided, and then, so compressed air is actually supplied at that rating. And then the capacity of the compressor is basically decided by the volume of uh, air that it can deliver in minutes at that pressure. So it is uh, often often in engineering it is often uh, described in terms of CFM, it is called CFM cubic feet uh, per minute. So uh, how, how many cubic feet per minute of uh, air the compressor can supply, so that generally indicates its capacity. Now we have pneumatic reservoirs as we said this is a this is a typical picture it, it, it is just a container with one inlet and one outlet and uh, holds holds air under pressure and the capacity of the basically that is the you know pneumatic energy so the, so the, so the pressurized air is the pneumatic energy which is used to do work and the and the amount of energy that can be stored is basically decided by the by, by two quantities that is at what pressure uh, how much how much air is uh, stored and what is the pressure so they are generally a multiplicative relation because uh, i mean volume and pressure are both if you have high volume and high pressure then you are going to have high energy so as I said that it stores pressurized air for fast delivery of air volume and uh, it is like a capacitor somewhat if you if you if you if you appreciate an electric analogy then just like for supplying suddenly supplying large currents uh, without causing the voltage to drop we all we always connect a big capacitor across a, across a power supply because the capacitor can supply a lot of uh, current instantly uh, and, and therefore it, I mean as long as it has the charge to supply the current. So therefore uh, capacitor is generally kept charged at the circuit output so that current demands large transient current demands can be met without causing the terminal voltage to drop. So in that sense the, the, the accumulator is, is acts like a capacitor. Now the pressure in the accumulator, I say as uh, the pressure in the accumulator has to be controlled because uh, we so as if if air is really drawn from the accumulator at any time, then the pressure in the accumulator will fall, and then we you know uh, we need to uh, f make that make up for that loss of pressure and make the pressure again back to the standard one, uh, and that is typically. Uh, controlled using a delay with hysteresis and then used with pressure regulator to actually deliver to valve and cylinder at six at around you know 60 psi g is a is a very typical figure so the control is somewhat like this it's it's just like you know it's just like level control very simple very simple that uh, suppose the regulator is actually designed to work at 120 psi then uh, there is there is a hysteresis in the sense that oops i don't know why this happened i don't know why this happened anyway uh, yeah, 
just a moment this is working uh, okay so uh, so you see what we are trying to do is that if you have we have a pre if you have had a pressure setting suppose a, if you have had a pressure setting the of let us say 120 psi now as you are drawing load so the, this pressure will start falling and then at 115 psi you again turn on the compressor such that the pressure keeps rising and becomes so that the pressure will uh, so you you actually make the uh, you touch your turn on the compressor at this point of time and then the pressure builds now as the pressure builds so you are moving along this line the compressor is now on and then you actually although you want to keep it at 120 p the 120 psi is the nominal voltage where you want to keep it but you actually let it build up to a certain point let us say up to 125 psi and then again then at when it reaches 125 psi you actually stop it so you come here right and then again as the loads will draw the air so the pressure will fall so you actually move around through this what is called hysteresis rectangle right so now uh, okay but there are so this is one uh, this is the way of you know controlling the reservoir or the accumulator but there are many other some other uh, pieces of equipment needed like for example you need uh, pressure regulators now why you need pressure regulator is actually very simple <coughs> that is see uh, generally in pneumatics you have one pressure source right so suppose that this is this is this is the compressed air source compressed air source so as we have just now seen that firstly and, and from there generally typically a, and a kind of duct or bus runs which provide air supply to a number of equipment right and firstly all these equipment may not be operating at the same uh, at the same pressure so some of them may be working at let us say 50 psi psi some of some may be working at 120 psi whatever so uh, but but the fact is that remember that we we said that why 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 a pneumatic system is cheap it's cheap because you are going to use one compressor so the compressor cost is going to divide is going to get divided so just because these require are going to require uh, these are going to require different pressure so we are not going to connect three different compressors which will individually supply this equipment so therefore we need a device here we need a device here which will take in this maybe this is some you know 300 psi so which will take in this 300 psi pressure and will convert it to 50 or 120 so we are going to put actually we are going to put different pressure regulators for all these equipment and have a single compressor so firstly that is going to be cheaper second thing is that as we have seen just now when we saw the uh, hysteresis controls of that uh, of the reservoir that the this pressure source is going to fluctuate but that but for our operation precise precision operation it is not good that the pressure supply of this equipment fluctuate so therefore if we put a if we put a pressure regulator here then the pressure regulator is firstly going to convert a high pressure level to a low pressure level and secondly it is going to so even if the pressure here so suppose this is a 300 psi bus so even if the pressure here varies 300 psi plus minus let us say plus minus even 50 psi but but the pressure here is, is even if it goes up and down the pressure here is going to be regulated by the pressure regulator to exactly very close to 60 psi so so the pressure regulator actually does these two jobs it first converts pressure levels and secondly it holds the pressure steady secondly as i said that we need lubrication so lubrication is needed as i said that first it's not self lubricating secondly because of tightness of seals 
uh, you you tend to increase friction, so therefore lubrication explicit lubrication is necessary. And we also need air, lot of air filtering because we are sucking in air from the atmosphere which contains many, many, many particulate matters and which are going to get clogged inside the equipment and then cause further problems of maintenance in terms of, you know, sealing misses, in terms of increased friction, etc. So we need equipment to uh, take care of these. So, a regulator is used to drop pressure at to a level which is appropriate for a machine and it prevents pre pressure fluctuations on the air distribution duct to reach the machine. And <coughs> settings generally re for regulator settings can be adjusted and it is self relieving in the sense that if the uh, pressure, I mean there is there's, there's too much inlet pressure then it is, it generally relieves that pressure. So, this is just a typical picture of a pressure regulator and so you have this high pressure inlet, you have the low pressure uh, or rather controlled pressure outlet. So, this is going to the system or the equipment where the pressure is needed. This is coming typically coming from the reservoir. So now, the pressure setting can be adjusted by this pressure adjusting knob and often there is a pressure gauge so that you one can see that the uh, inlet pressure variation. So, then the filter, filter can be connected at, is generally connected at compressor intake and various types are possible, paper element type is a popular one and sometimes you put additional filtering you need just before the equipment to, you know, ensure further that these are, uh, that, the, that your components are protected and uh, so it, it removes the large particles and it also removes moisture because especially particulate matter and, and moisture, you know, creates a very sticky mix which uh, leads to all kinds of problems like, you know, increased friction, sticking. So, the, so the term stiction actually comes from that. So, the uh, static friction may, in, may increase substantially unless moisture and this particulate matter is not removed. So, we have explicit lubricators because air has little lubrication and low viscosity and spray. So, the lubrication is generally achieved by spraying fine oil mist to air flow. So, you it is very difficult to you know in a distributed system to, to lubricate the system. So, just like in hydraulics the oil itself is the lubricator. So, as it travels throughout the system, it actually lubricates the whole of the system. In this case, air is not itself the lubricant, so, but it is nevertheless traveling throughout the system. So, it, so it is simple. Uh, so, the delivery of the lubricant can be easily done using the air itself. So, therefore, oil lubricating oil is actually in, an, in, a, in a kind of atomized form, it is uh, spread to the air flow and then the air flow takes it to various points. And where it provides a lubricating function. So, if you have smaller droplets, you have longer lubrication and sometimes you can have uh, automi atomization. But this oils, remember that the moment you are going to put this oil uh, mist, uh, you cannot directly uh, release it, you can release it, you, 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 you need not return the air, that is fine. But at the same time, you cannot release the air just like that into the atmosphere because of that oil mist because it is going to be health hazard. So, sometimes, so you actually before, uh, before releasing into the atmosphere, it, it must be, this oil must be filtered. Since this filtering regulation and, and lubrication are very, very common uh, requirements, so we have, you know, like we have like combo units where this uh, filter regulator lubricator are designed together. So, filter plus regulator plus lubricator unit, typically this is a seam ball. So, so you have regulators, lubricators and actually filters. So, so typically some, some, some typical pictures of these, uh, these equipment. <laughs> then we come to direction control valves. 
right. These are very similar to the direction control valves that we have studied in hydraulics and it so it controls and changes direction of air flow from time to time. There are various functional types as we know there it can be two way, it can be three way, it can be four way, even even it can be five way, it, there, there are various positions. So it can be a two position or it can be a three position valve. So in, in, what I mean is that based on their functionality and based on, based on their construction, there are various categories of uh, this direction control valve. For example, a, this is a typical three way valve which is manually operated using this knob and it has three operational modes. So uh, namely off, vent and on. So it can be made off in which case air will not flow. If it is on then, then the air will move from inlet to the outlet and if it is in vent mode then the uh, inlet and outlet will be uh, connected to the atmosphere. Looking at some very typical valve case studies, so uh, very standard. This is a this is a double acting cylinder, and so double acting means we need to move it this way as well as this way. So here we have connected. Uh, this is a two port valve. This is a uh, this is a three port valve. This is a three way valve. Two position. So <coughs> it can connect either this to this or it can connect in this position, it will connect this to this. And this side will be connect can be again connected either so, so they are actually independent. So depending on the positions of these valves, if they are in the position shown, then this side is also pressurized and this side is also pressurized. So the valve is locked, right? On the other hand, on the other hand, if you connect this end to this position and this end if you connect to this position, then what happens is that then the, then, then the piston will start moving right because this chamber will be connected here, but this chamber will be connected to high pressure. So the piston will start moving right and then there is vice versa. If you connect it the other way, this in this position and this in this position will start moving the other way. If you keep both of them, so there are four, four, four combinations and if you keep both of them in this position, in this position then actually the cylinder is floated. So it can move, it, it is free to move because both ends are connected to vent. So yeah, so A to A B to P locks the piston and A B to E locks, E means exhaust, uh, the, the piston is floated. Similarly, this is a case where, uh, where this is a two position five ported four way valve. So five ports because uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 ported and two position because this is this is one position and this is the other position. Okay. So what happens is that sometimes you know these pistons when they are moving the load they will require high pressure operation because a lot of force is to be created and when they are returning then it is a low pressure operation. So, uh, so what happens is that see that the low pressure source is actually connected to this point, this is, this is sealed. So this, this motion is going to actually occur and this is connected to exhaust. So this is the return position. On the other hand when it is going moving this way, so the, this, is, this is the rod, so the load is going to be connected to the rod, load 
So, when it is pushing the load at that time it this this is the high pressure position H p forward position So, in that case you can actually drive it using your high pressure source right and <coughs> so that will possibly save some energy. Similarly, this is another application where uh, for example, see this is a three way valve application where if you connect it to this position then the valve is valve will move this way these are springs. So, valve is spring loaded and so therefore, for the for the for the return you do not need any pressure and you just shift the valve. So, this will get connected to this port which is exhaust and uh, then by spring action since 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 this side when it is connected to exhaust this side pressure is low. So, so by spring action uh, the valve can return. So, you need only apply pneumatic pressure for moving the valve to the right from movement to the left is actually achieved by the spring. Similarly, if you connect it to this position then what happens is that the pressure gets connected here and then when this valve is in this position you see. So, this is sealed while the high pressure will go and the low pressure will return. So, the cylinder will move this way. If you now shift this valve then what is happen what is going to happen is that the high pressure will go this way. So, high pressure will go this way. So, it will be applied here it will be applied here and the this this other side will be applied uh, will be applied here. So, it will be so it will be exhaust this is also exhaust this, this two are vents you know this is vent and this is vent. So, then it will move this way right on the other hand if this valve is shifted to this position then what happens is that both sides of the cylinder for example, <coughs> then this side of the cylinder is free for example, in if the valve is in the position shown then this is sealed right. So, therefore, uh, therefore, this chamber is sealed while this chamber is open. So, what happens is that now if you want to push the cylinder then the air will get compressed and some force will be created. So, it cannot be freely moved you know. <coughs> so, it, 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 it gets kind of soft locked that way. So, you can have various sorts of uh, such circuits and we will see some of them later in our next lecture. These directional valves sometimes they have to be they have to be moved you know we were talking about moving the directional valve from this position to that position. So, how do we move that? So, there as just like in hydraulics there are various uh, ways. So, you can have manual where you can have a push button, you can have a hand lever, you can have a foot pedal whatever you have or sometimes for very large valves we can for example, this is a you, you can have a pilot valve. So, you know this is a large valve. So, to be able to shift that position you see you see pneumatic pilots are used. So, this is a this is a pneumatic pilot which is used to shift this main valve right. This may be a this may be a big hydraulic valve also and this hollow triangle indicates pneumatics. So, so, you can have hydraulic pilots, you can have air pilots. 
So, even a large pneumatic valve can be driven by a small air pilot and they, they or otherwise they may be solenoids and sometimes as we have seen that they may have uh, they may be spring loaded such that the uh, especially the return stroke the, as such does not require an actuation force. So, these are the various ways of uh, actuating a <coughs> directional valve. So, this brings us to the end of the lesson. Uh, so, what we have seen is that uh, we have seen the pneumatic system principles and benefits. In particular, uh, we have seen that we are going to in pneumatic systems we, we are going to use uh, compressed uh, air and not only that we are going to use compressed air, we are uh, so, compressed air you know has some benefits that we I mean you know air is free and uh, it does not require a return line etcetera. But on the other hand the because of the compressibility of air the system response tends to be slower uh, and the there is another big benefit uh, compared to hydraulics is that the, the fire safety is much more uh, intrinsic. And so, there are so basically it means that there are certain very definite classes of application. We have also seen that in, in certain cases where you need a lot of you know low power applications spread over a large area, pneumatic systems come very much cheaper because it is uh, you can use one compressor and then you can use an air duct system to actually you know reach the pneumatic power to a large number of places without requiring too much uh, ducting costs. So, so, there are certain kinds of applications where pneumatic systems are quite well suited compared to hydraulic systems. So, it is it, just a question of, uh, so it is just a question of the particular kind of application where these systems become more beneficial. We have also seen the main system components in the sense that we have seen talked about compressors, talked about uh, accumulators, uh, regulators and some kinds of direction control valves as well as the cylinder. Now, there are many various other kinds of elements which we will talk about in the, uh, in the next lesson. So, we have seen the major kinds of system components, compressors we have seen mainly the compressors are which are used are reciprocating uh, or uh, reciprocating compressors. <coughs> we have seen how they work and uh, we have looked at some pneumatic control valves, uh, various kinds and we have also talked about accessories such as uh, lubricators and filters. So, coming to the end, before the end let us look at some, some easy relatively simple questions, what are the main advantages of pneumatics over electric systems and so what are the main advantages of pneumatics over hydraulic systems and can you, so for example, one, one thing could be can you name some applications where uh, a hydraulic system is preferred, can you name some application where a, where, a, where a pneumatic system is preferred and identify the major components of a pneumatic system. So, major components we have discussed this, name two major types of compressors. So, two major types of compressors could be you know reciprocating, could be rotor event type, could be fan type, non, non, non positive displacement also then three different types of directional valves. So, we have seen these uh, and draw their symbols. So, this is of course, very similar to hydraulics. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to lesson 30 of industrial automation control. In this lesson, we are going to look at, continue to look at pneumatic systems. So, uh, so in lesson 30, we will look at more, more components, pneumatic components. We will look at a kind of logic called pneumatic logic and we will see some control applications and finally, we will see a comparison with hydraulic systems. So, uh, 
and the instructional objectives are firstly to you know be able to draw some typical valve constructions describe and or kind of pneumatic logics explain different functions of some special kinds of valves which are used in pneumatics like a quick exhaust and flow valves mention comparative merits and demerits of pneumatic and hydraulic systems and also be familiar with some control applications so <coughs> We have already seen direction control valves, we have also seen them during hydraulics, so there is nothing much new here. So the valve is uh, actually shown here, there are, so you can see the inlet, uh, uh, inlet and the outlet ports. So you can see that uh, this is the, wh wh when the pilot pressure is there, this is as you can see that there is a spring here. Uh, let me choose a proper pen here. Uh, so this is the pilot pressure, so when the pilot pressure is not there, there is a spring, right? Oh, I see, this is selected as the eraser. Mm -mm, I have to choose a pen first and then choose the color, so yeah. So yeah, so it is so, so spring loaded, so when there is no pilot pressure, then the spring is going to push it up and this is going to be closed. This so therefore the valve is closed on both sides so therefore this symbol is shown and when the pilot pressure is applied then it goes down so there is flow simple two way valve uh, <coughs> then we come to uh, a three way valve basically this is a <coughs> there are two ports one is supply, the other is exhaust and uh, again as you can see this is also spring loaded. So when there is no, well, this is, uh, when this is button operated, so when the push button is not pressed then this is supply is closed and cylinder is connected to exhaust. Uh, 